Hey everyone, this is Mike from vSwitch Zero. Today I'm going to take a look at Synology's active backup for business. So Synology was kind enough to send me a review unit of their DS1621 Plus NAS unit. And one of the things I've been looking forward to trying out is their backup solution that integrates with uh, VMware vSphere. Um, active backup for business is not just for vSphere. It can be used for uh, physical servers, file servers, uh, Hyper-V, um, but the Integration with vSphere is, is um, what I'm most interested in. I think a lot of people with home labs or smaller environments would also be. So it's basically a software package that you install on the NAS itself. It's not something that you have to install in a virtual machine or anything like that. Um, but what's best about it is that it is a free product. There are no licensing fees whatsoever. You don't have to uh, pay for it. There's no one-time fee. There's no restrictions. You, there's no limit as to the number of virtual machines you can back up. It's a full-featured backup solution that's basically given away for free with their NAS units. So this is really great, especially for people who have you know smaller environments. Maybe you've just got a home lab that you want to back things up on. Um, but even better, you, you don't need vCenter for this product to work. It'll work with standalone hosts. And best of all, it'll actually work with the free version of ESXi. Um, as you may know, most backup solutions will not work with the free version because there's a bunch of APIs that are disabled that are used for backups. If you take a look quickly at their requirements and limitations for vSphere here, you can see that uh, for f the free version of ESXi, you just have to ensure that SSH is enabled um, in order for it to work. So I'm assuming that instead of using some of the APIs that are available in the paid versions of ESXi, they're just using SCP to copy over files and things like that. You'll also notice that um, there are a bunch of versions listed up here. Um, I did use it in, even though 7.0 is not listed, it does work just fine in 7.0 update 1. I'm not sure if this document's just a little bit out of date here, but all of the recent versions of vSphere work just fine. Now, as far as what NAS units are supported, um, there's quite a large number of them. Uh, some of the lower end units are not on this list, as you can see here, but most of the uh, the plus units, any any of the units with a plus at the end, um, are supported, um, most of the recent ones anyway, as well as their FS series and the XS series. Um, so any of the rack mount stuff will will support it. So let's dive right in. So here's my vSphere environment here. I've got a total of three hosts in my cluster right now. I've also got a Raspberry Pi running uh, ESXi on ARM. Um, so we'll try to back up something on that as well. Um, but I also have a standalone host here, ESX4, um, which is not connected to vCenter. So we're gonna add this as well as a, as a backup source and see how that works. So the first thing you'll need to do is install the package. So if you go to the Synology Package Manager, or package center, I should say. And uh, actually, you can see it's the first one listed here, active backup for business. You will notice that there are other active backup um, tools here for various uh, software solutions like Microsoft 365, G Suite, etc. But uh, I'm just going to use the normal one. So I'll just go ahead and install that. So you'll notice that one of the first things it asks you to do is to activate. So you do need a Synology account for the activation process. I'm not sure why Synology decided to do this, but it is totally free. So just go ahead and activate here. It will open a new window for you to log in with your Synology account. Um, you'll have to accept their privacy statement and um, agree to proceed. So once you've activated, uh, you'll be brought to the, the main overview page here. You can see that there's a, a list of different types of backups that you can do. So virtual machines, file servers, physical servers, PCs. Um, I'm not going to talk at all about physical servers or file servers. Um, I'm going to focus on the, the virtual machine aspect of this product at this time. So the first thing you'll need to do is go over to the virtual machine section here. And you can see there's different tabs for vSphere and Hyper-V. Uh, under the vSphere tab here, you can go to Manage Hypervisor. This is where you'll create your connection to vCenter server or to an ESX host. So you can see I've got none listed here right now. I'm just going to go ahead and add my vCenter server. And you'll need to use uh, a, an account with proper access. Now, I did want to mention one thing. Synology does have a great page listing out all of the uh, user permissions that are required for the various uh, object types in vSphere. So you can create a restricted uh, user account for this purpose. You don't have to use the admin, like SSO administrator account or 
give it full access. There is some benefit too because if you do see tasks popping up in your, your recent tasks pane, if you do create a dedicated user for this, you will see um, you know, a backup user executing certain things as opposed to just the administrator account. So it helps you to differentiate between what's, what's being done there. Um, I'm just going to go ahead for this purpose, just use the administrator account um, just for simplicity right now, but I'm probably going to create one of those in the future. Okay, and of course you get the certificate thumbprint, which is a good sign of connectivity here. And there you go. So it did detect uh, the correct version and it's online. So I'm also going to go ahead and add the ESX host that's a standalone. So this one's not connected to vCenter. And for this one, you'll have to use the root account. So now that we've got our hypervisors listed here, while well, vSetter and a hypervisor, um, I'll go back over to the vSphere page and you can see that after refreshing, we have a list of all of the virtual machines in our inventory here. So you can see that uh, ESX4.vSwitch is here and we've got two virtual machines there. Um, I've also got the uh, all of the hosts connected to vCenter. So ESX1, ESX2, ESX3 and at the very bottom, my Raspberry Pi as well. So there's uh, four virtual machines there. Uh, I do see an error at the top. I'm just going to refresh. I have a feeling it's probably just... No, maybe not. It says they're both online, so I'm just going to go to another page. Oh, okay, no, it's fine. Probably just a, a momentary glitch while it was being added there. So um, the first thing you'll want to do, actually, I just want to show you one thing here. So under the storage uh, section here, this is where the uh, storage that's associated with your, your backup will show up. You'll notice there's nothing there. At first, I was thinking you had to add a, a folder or, or a volume or something, but this is actually created first when uh, you, you um, create your initial task. So don't worry about that right now. So I'll go back over to the virtual machine section. So just click uh, create a task at the top here. And this is where your destination is selected. So I've got a, a RAID 5 volume here, 14 terabytes. It's a better FS file system type. And the shared folder that gets created is just called Active Backup for Business within that volume. So we'll go with that. I'll just hit Next. And I'm just going to name my task here. So I'll just call it vSphere Test 1. And you'll see the tree view just like you would see within the vSphere client here, which is great. So I'm just going to select a, a couple of virtual machines. So from the cluster, I will back up uh, just some small things here. I don't want to do a really large backup. So I'll do iperf bench 1 and WP dev 1. So two virtual machines from there. And I also want to get something from the uh, standalone ESX host ESX4 here and I'll do iperf bench 2 and actually why don't we pick one from the Raspberry Pi as well just for for good measure here so we'll do the NS2 virtual machine which is my uh, secondary name server and that's good so we'll hit next so here you'll see there's uh, a number of options available. Uh, this product does support change block tracking or CBT, which is excellent. That's kind of the uh, bread and butter of these snapshot based backup solutions. So change block tracking, I mean, it's been around for a long time, but it basically allows you to do incremental type backups instead of having to do a full backup every single time you do this. So your, your first backup will be uh, fairly large and then uh, subsequent backups will only uh, back up the changed blocks as opposed to backing up everything again which is uh, which is excellent. Uh, this also does support application aware backup. So this is uh, for the Microsoft uh, VSS. You can see some more information here. If you have uh, virtual machines that support the shadow copy service, you can do that for uh, better backup consistency. Uh, it also supports compression, which is excellent. If you're sort of bandwidth limited, that can uh, speed up your backups a bit. Uh, encryption as well, if uh, if your environment's security sensitive, which is also great. Um, and you can also do backup verification, which um, I'll talk a little bit more about that because that re relies on uh, Synology's VMM in order for that to work. But uh, this is great because th these are you know features you wouldn't really expect to see in a very simple free backup tool. This is pretty pretty good set of features available here. Under advanced settings, you'll see uh, some scripting capabilities. So if you want to do a, 
uh, a freeze and thaw script. Um, you can do that here. You can just define them uh, for Windows or Linux. I'm not going to bother with this right now, but again, excellent uh, feature to see in a free product. So I'm just going to leave everything else at the, the defaults and select next. Um, so you, this is where you would define a schedule. If you wanted this to be a daily backup, you can you can specify that. I'll, I'll say it, we'll do it daily here and we'll run it at yeah 3 a.m. every morning. That sounds good. Uh, you can also define a, uh, a backup window if you only want backups to run at a certain time, which is, uh, which is a great feature too, so that they don't spill out into business hours and slow things down. So let's go ahead and hit next. Um, there's also retention policy settings that you can set here. Um, I'll just have it so that it keeps the, the last three versions, which is good. So again, some pretty good flexibility there. And the permissions that we see here, this is for the, the user accounts within the Synology DSM itself. Um, if you had numerous administrators accessing it, you could restrict who has access to restore the VMs. Um, in my case, we'll just uh, leave it as admin since I'm the only one using it. And then there's the summary page. And then just hit apply to create the task. And I get the option to back up now. So since we haven't backed up before, I'll go ahead and say yes here. And it'll take you right to the task list uh, section. So this is sort of like the tasks and events page for this uh, this tool. And you can see the status uh, here is currently backing up. Now, if I go over to my vCenter, vSphere environment here, you can see that the uh, virtual machine snapshot creation has started. We've got two VMs snapshotted so far. Now I did uh, select only two concurrent uh, machines at one time, so that's why we only see two of them there. Um, if you've got 10 gig networking or um, a lot of compute resources, you can certainly increase that. I probably should have increased it, but two's okay for now. Uh, I'll just go back over here again, and you can see the progress is incrementing. So I'm not going to uh, make you wait for this, so I'll just fast forward the video at this point. Okay, so you can see it was successful. That was actually pretty quick, but um, then again, my VMs I selected were very small. Um, this will obviously uh, depend on how large your VMs are, how much bandwidth you have available, um, things along those lines. So the next thing I'm going to do is take a look at the file station to take a look at the shared folder that was created there. I want to see what actually is contained within. So here's our active backup data folder. And you can see there's a folder within with the name of the task that uh, I created. And you can see the next folder has the, the date and timestamp on it so you know which one you're talking about. And then within you've got a very simple structure of you know the VM name. So within here you'll actually see the full virtual machine, uh, VMDKs, VMX file. So the whole structure of the VM is, is backed up here, which is excellent. It's not sort of contained in a big compressed blob file or anything like that. So this is actually really useful in the sense that all of the files are right there. You could quite literally copy one of these off if you wanted to. And, and it, it basically makes the the backups very portable and useful in this in this way. So. Another neat thing I wanted to show you too is that uh, you can actually mount the virtual machine disks from within the Synology and access the files within. Uh, so this is great if you know you just needed to access a specific file in a backup. If you go over here, you, you, you'll notice that in addition to the active backup for business, there's also an active backup for business portal. So this is another HTTP, HTTPS page hosted off the Synology um, that will actually allow you to browse the, the file systems of the, the backups themselves. So at the top here, you can see task. Um, this is where you would select the, uh, the virtual machine. So let's say, for example, in the WP Dev 1 machine, I wanted to just pull a, a file off from a certain date. You would just select that and you can actually see that there's disk one volume one listed here and I can browse the file system. So this supports all of the major Linux Windows file systems, NTFX, EXT3, all of the, the common stuff. Unless you've got something uh, really weird, it, it will work here. Um, and let's just say I wanted to go to my home directory and let's just say you wanted to pull off, uh, I don't know, a file. I don't have any files here, but let's just say this stack file was something you wanted to to download. You can you can do it straight from here, which is uh, an excellent feature. You certainly wouldn't expect to see this in in something very basic or or free. So, kudos to Synology for that as well. So, if we wanted to do an actual uh, virtual machine restoration back to vSphere, we'll do that next here. 
So I'll just go back here and if you click on your task name, uh, you'll see the option to restore. So I'll just go ahead and click that. And you have an option here to restore to vSphere, Hyper-V, or to uh, Synology's Virtual Machine Manager. And I'll take a look at that later because that's pretty neat as well. I'll go ahead and restore it to vSphere though. And you have two options here. There's an instant restore and a full virtual machine restore. And the difference here is that with an instant restore, uh, it's going to mount the backup image directly. Um, it won't take the time to copy it back to a, a different data store. So definitely good if you want uh, to get things back up and running really quickly. Um, I'll just do the full virtual machine restore because I do want to copy it back to the original data store. I'll just hit next here. And I'm only going to restore, we'll just do the WP Dev 1 machine. And you can see uh, where it says restore point, you do have the option to select which successful backup you want to select here. In this case, I'm, I only have one, so that's the only option. So here you have the option to restore to the original location or to a new location with different settings. This is important because if you restore to the original location, if the, if the VM is still there, which it is in my case, it'll actually overwrite it. So I don't want to do that. Um, I'll just restore it to a new location so that I have a copy of the, the virtual machine. And you can see there's an option at the bottom to regenerate a MAC address, uh, which is important. Uh, if you have two VMs in the same inventory with the same MAC, you're obviously going to have conflicts. So um, this is selected automatically if you uh, choose the section, second option above, which is good. Let's hit next here. And here's where you can select uh, the VM name and that sort of thing. By default, it just depends restore to the end. Uh, the folder's fine, so I'll just hit next. Uh, it asks me which hypervisor I want to put it on, the resource pool, which in this case is, I guess they consider a cluster as resource pool. Let's hit next. And Yep, here's your, your data store that you want to put it on. I'll just move it to a different data store just for fun here. I'll just put it in the NVMe. Actually, yeah, that's fine. We'll go with that next. And I'll keep the port group the same. And now we're ready to go. It also gives you the option to power it on right away. I won't bother because I don't want those two VMs to clash with each other. And just hit apply. And now we can see the uh, the status of the restore here. If I go back over to the vSphere environment, you should see, yeah, reconfigure virtual machine task. And you can see that uh, WP Dev 1 underscore restore is here with the date appended as well. And so I'll just go ahead and fast forward the video now until this is finished. Okay, so the restore is done. You'll notice that it actually disappeared completely when that happened. And we did get a notification. Uh, within DSM saying that it was successful. So if I go back over to vSphere, you can see that uh, the virtual machine is WP Dev 1 Restore. So yeah, it looks like that uh, date that was appended to the end was just temporary. In the end, it does uh, call it what you had in the wizard there. And you can see that the, I just want to see the hard disk because I did change the data store location. And you see it's in shared NVMe as I expect there. So that's great. So yeah, really smooth. Um, I've done this a couple of times now and it's always worked without issue. So yeah, very smooth product. So the next thing I'm going to do is uh, show you how to restore into the VMM, which I think is a neat feature as well. Um, one of the VMs I have is pretty small. I'm just going to pick the smallest one and we'll do a restoration here. So I'll go back over to virtual machine section, task list. We'll do restore from this task. And this time we'll do an instant restore to the Synology VMM. Make sure that you install the VMM package before you try this, otherwise it'll fail, obviously. So let's go ahead and select the third option. And I believe the iPerf Bench 1 is probably the smallest one I have here, so we'll, we'll be doing that one. And again, we only have one restore point, so that's fine. Okay, so for the storage volume, it does it does ask you which volume you want to stick it into. I've got uh, plenty of space in the RAID 5 volume, so we'll go with that. And here's the configuration. It doesn't actually um, pull this in from the VMX file. Um, the original machine, I think, only had two CPUs, so we'll drop that down. And this NAS unit only has four gigs of RAM in it. I haven't expanded it, so we'll keep this uh, just to one gig, which is uh, plenty for this VM. Next, 
So here you can set your virtual disk size. I'll just leave it at 10 gigs. Um, the virtual disk controller type is something specific to, to this, uh, this hypervisor that's running here. I'm just going to leave that to the default and hit next. And for the network, um, you do have to define your networks within the VMM, of course. Uh, the default one is just my management network, so we'll just leave that at, at the, uh, the default. And there you go. You can also mount an ISO file if you want to. Um, the BIOS, I'm just going to leave legacy BIOS. Everything is fine here, so I'll just hit next. And you can assign permissions to the, the virtual machine. Again, I only have the admin account, so I'll just select that and hit next. And there we go. And I'll just power it up after it's created and hit apply. So you can see it opened up the uh, virtual machine manager right away. And the VM is now importing. So I'll just fast forward to when this is finished here. So here we are. Virtual machine is created. Uh, I believe it should have powered on automatically. Maybe I just need to refresh. No, actually, it didn't power on, so I'll just go ahead and power it on. And if all goes well, I can connect to it, which will open a console. And there you have it. My backed up virtual machine from the vSphere environment is now powering up in the uh, hypervisor on the Synology NAS itself. So very neat uh, feature if you did have a, a critical VM that you needed to restore right away. Now again, memory is very critical if you want this to work. So I've only got this, the default 4 gigs, but I believe it can be expanded up to 32 gigs. So um, if virtualization or running VMs on the, uh, the NAS itself is important to you, you'll want to increase that probably to the maximum that you can. And so there you have it. Um, active Backup for Business, excellent tool, free with many Synology NAS units. A lot of great features within that you'd expect to find in, in much more expensive paid enterprise products. So I think this is an excellent uh, addition and bonus that you get if you do purchase a, a Synology NAS. Now the NAS units are obviously not cheap. I know that they are a bit on the pricier side, but uh, with my experience with Synology, the software is just top notch. You really get what you pay for. Uh, and then some in this case. So definitely something worth taking a look at. Anyway, that's it for today. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. Thanks very much.